Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this session. Uh, the main objective uh, of this session is to discuss the central banking and the role of central banks uh, in the money supply process. So the more specifically in this session we will uh, cover uh, what are the functions of central bank or uh, especially the process uh, through which central bank uh, influence the money supply in an economy. So that is the main uh, objective in this session and this discussion we will continue in the subsequent sessions as well uh, where we get more into the process of determining money supply in an economy. So coming to central banks, central banks play a crucial role in ensuring economic and financial stability. So they conduct monetary policy to achieve low and stable inflation. And Overall, the uh, central banks uh, across the globe uh, are considered as the monetary authority and they are uh, tasked to act as the apex banks, that the bankers bank and also to act as the lender of the last resort. So overall, the role of central bank uh, is to ensure uh, economic and financial stability in an economy. So coming to this, uh, the first thing, the important function of role uh, is to uh, influence the money supply in an economy to ensure uh, monetary stability in an economy so that it also uh, positively affect the economic growth as well. So coming to money, by this time you are already familiar with the concept of money. So let us just have a quick overview of what is money. So money according to Adam Smith. Uh, he used uh, money in synonymous with wealth uh, that are in common language considered as in every respect synonymous to that means money means income or wealth according to the very very uh, old that old conventional uh, definition. But this is not at all what modern monetary economies mean by money. In modern economies as in other Smith wealth is produced in the real economy through the production and exchange of goods and services. And money has, when we talk of money, we are discussing one part of wealth. So that means uh, if you recall uh, our discussion in the previous uh, sessions, money is one of the asset, one of the alternative asset uh, that we have seen. So in that way, we can say that uh, money is a part of wealth, but not all wealth does not mean that that is money, right? So, Importantly, money is one part of asset or one part of wealth. Functions of money, uh, overall money, the main functions of money is uh, one is to act as a medium of exchange or payment that means in facilitating the act of exchange that is one. Uh, second one is money to act as a store of value to store the value or wealth of someone or who in individuals or institutions. Then the third one is uh, to act as uh, the unit of account and a standard of deferred payments. That means in expressing in a common unit uh, the value of the many different goods and services produced is a unit of account as well. Money is, this, uh, is the most liquid part of wealth. That means that part which can be most readily exchanged for goods and services. So this also we have seen in the previous sessions that means we consider we discuss money as one of the most liquid. So among the all the assets we said that the most liquid asset is uh, money that means money the demand for money in that respect we said that mon demand for money is also called as demand for liquidity preference. That means the liquidity preference means actually people uh, hold holding more money. So money in monetary economies does not mean income or wealth that is the main takeaway from here uh, rather money is uh, any asset acceptable in exchange for uh, goods and services. Thus money is a subset of 
all those assets that might be acceptable in exchange. So, coming to the money supply, so this is the concept that we often use. So, the money supply means the total quantity of money available to the public people that the general public in an economy. And though the we use to our understanding normally we use supply as a flow variable, but when it comes to money supply, money supply is actually it should be better to call money stock also, it is actually money stock, it is a stock variable that means the total quantity of money at any particular point of time. So, when we refer, when we talk about money supply, actually we mean uh, total quantity of money at any particular point of time in, in fact. And the money supply is measured, the quantity of money in an economy as the sum of those items uh, that serve as a medium of payments in the economy. That means command over the purchasing power. So, any item that you see that you have, you can easily use it as a medium of exchange or that means you use it as a power for your purchase uh, then that means uh, that is we can call it, call it as uh, money supply. There are various definitions for money supply, money supply definition. The first one we call monetary base, we will explain it in detail. Uh, monetary base means we mainly we also call it as uh, high powered money. After a couple of minutes, uh, we will give a proper definition of monetary base, what constitute monetary base by using uh, appropriate relevant variable, we will define it. But for short, uh, monetary base is the high powered money based on which the central bank can create further generate or multiply the money supply. Then coming to first definition called M1 money supply, M1 money supply is called the narrow definition of money. So, narrow definition of money here means a currency, currency in held by a public and the publics that is one, that is one component C uh, plus the public's checkable deposits in financial institution that is mainly with the commercial banks. So, checkable deposit means uh, we can also call it as demand deposits that means the money that you can withdraw at any time. Here uh, why we call it because currency means uh, the currency in circulation currency with you that means you can use it for, med for as a medium of payment at any time. Then what how uh, demand deposit the money with the public uh, sorry money with the uh, banking system by the public that is demand deposit which can be withdrawn at any time right that is the one of the feature of uh, checkable deposit that the money can withdraw at any time whenever you want uh, you can withdraw at any time in at any time in the 24 hours right so that means there is no restriction at all so then uh, because it can be withdrawn at any time that means your money with the bank that is demand deposit it is almost equivalent to currency it means that means you can spend it at any time right you can spend it at any any time so because of that the m1 definition the narrow definition they say that the checkable deposit also should be part of uh, money supply that means money supply means c plus uh, demand deposits because both uh, both are highly liquid and can be used for uh, purchase of goods and services at any time. Then comes to the second definition that is called M2 definition. M2 definition means more broad definition of money. This is given by uh, Milton Friedman, the sum of currency in the hands of the public plus that means C, C plus here C plus all the public's deposits in commercial banks. It not only include demand deposit which we mentioned here, but also include savings deposit in commercial banks. Because saving deposit these days uh, uh, due to the development of the banking system, uh, banks made, the, made it in a way that, that actually you can even withdraw the savings deposit also at any time. Now, unlike similar to um, uh, current deposit, a checkable deposit, savings deposit also can be withdrawn uh, at any time. So, because of that this also almost is highly liquid. Uh, so, that means also become part of money supply. So, this is M2 definition. So, a still broader definition of money than Friedman definition is M2 plus deposits in near banks. That means even banks and even non-banking financial institution also include. That means 
those financial institution in which the deposit perform almost the same role for the depositors as similar deposits in uh, commercial banks. So, examples of such institutions are savings and loan association and mutual savings bank in the United States uh, and credit union trust companies and mortgage loan companies in Canada and building societies in the UK. So, accordingly there are seven, uh, several further definition that may actually little bit addition uh, with the M1 and M2 definition that is M2, M3, M4 uh, like that. However, the definition of the symbols have not become standardized and remain uh, country specific. Uh, let me now show you the money supply definition that is being used uh, in the USA. They have M1, M2 and M3 definition and starting with the M, M0 that is the monetary base. So, the concept of money supply in the USA uh, we can see that this one M0, uh, M1, M2 and M3. So, as per the federal definition, the definition given by federal reserve system that the US central banking system is, is like that. That is M0 means the total of all physical currency plus accounts at the central bank that can be exchanged for physical currency that is the monetary base or high powered money. Uh, then comes M1, M1 means the monetary base plus amount in demand account that is checking or current accounts that the money can be withdrawn uh, at any time uh, whenever the depositor wish, wishes right. And then comes the M2 money supply definition, uh, M2 means uh, M1 plus most savings bank accounts, uh, money market accounts and small denomination uh, time deposits and certificates of deposits accounts. So, coming to M2 here, one of the thing you might have observed that is the time deposit. So, the time deposit means uh, there is an expiry date, a maturity date maybe for 1 year, uh, 5 years or 10 years, uh, mostly it is for 1 year or 2 years. Uh, though is called as a time deposit, but over the time what you can see that because of the development of the banking system, uh, banking system allow even the uh, time depositors the who deposited money for a fixed period of time, they can also withdraw the money at uh, withdraw their deposit at any time, but at a penal rate of interest. They have to compromise or sacrifice uh, some of their the agreed rate of interest. But that means at a uh, reduced rate of interest, they can withdraw their fund. So that means even time deposit also having a characteristics of that means uh, it can also be withdrawn at any time. So that means the money that you are keeping in the in your bank as a time deposit that also serve as uh, as money. That means you can withdraw at any time. So because of that, that also become part of money supply. That means the M2 money definition. Right. Then comes uh, M3 money definition. This is a very broad definition that means M2 plus uh, all other deposit accounts, uh, deposit in euro dollars that in foreign, foreign banks and repurchase agreements, everything become part of money supply. So, that is M3 that is very broad definition of money. And for Canada, the money definition is given like that, that is M1 money, uh, that is uh, currency in the hands of public and demand deposit in chartered banks and then M1 plus and then M2 money, then M2 plus, uh, then M3 money. So, you can see that M1, M1 then M1 plus uh, some of that is personal checkable deposit, non-personal checkable notice checkable notice deposit at the chartered banks, mortgage loan companies, etc., credit unions, etc. So, there also in broadly they, we have, they have M1, M2 and M3 definitions. Then coming to India, the definition given by Reserve Bank of India is like this, that means reserve money means currency in circulation plus bankers deposit with the RBI and other deposit with the RBI. So, here this is the expanded form of this one uh, that is the reserve money. Then coming to M1 money, M1 money means a currency with the general public, with the public and demand deposit with the banking system and other deposits with the RBI. 
then coming to m2 m2 means m1 plus savings deposits of post of of post office savings bank that is m2 definition and m3 definition this is widely used in india that is m1 plus this this plus m1 plus time deposit with the banking system that means currency in circulation plus demand deposits plus uh, other deposit with the rbi plus then the time deposit as well then including the time deposit uh, that means with the fixed period of time is time deposit means here fixed deposits and recurring savings deposit account that means a uh, fixed uh, deposit means for a certain period of time that a uh, deposited for a period of time one year two years like that and recurring bank deposit means that also time similar to time deposit but actually a fixed amount is deposited in the bank on a regular period of time right a fixed a recurring savings deposit account a savings uh, made by people on a deposited uh, money deposited in a bank at a regular period of time uh, then comes the m4 uh, money definition that means uh, m3 plus all deposits with a post office savings bank uh, excluding national savings deposit certificates so these are all the broad definitions of money across the country and as i mentioned before the definition of uh, the money supply definition is uh, country specific but overall we can see that uh, there is a broad agreement uh, with uh, this money definition everyone agree with that um, uh, m not is the monetary base then m1 and uh, then the m3 that means um, currency in circulation plus uh, all kinds of deposit including demand deposit and time deposits so that actually a general agreement among countries so let us now see uh, why money supply is important uh, we have already seen what is the money supply definition and why money supply is important uh, importantly you know that um, movements in money supply affect interest rates and overall health of the economy so when the economy is uh, become going to become uh, becoming more and more monetized uh, then you know that money supply plays very crucial role in an economy and it has impact on uh, interest rate and as well as inflation as well uh, it also has a, uh, impact on inflation uh, it also has uh, influence on later on we will see that in exchange rate uh, forex rate uh, it has influence on forex rate and we will also see that uh, money is going to affect the GDP of a GDP uh, that means the overall level of economic activity that means the production of goods and services GDP and employment etc. So that means it also affects overall health of the economy and the movement of uh, money supply also has impact on the stability in the system that means stability in interest rate stability in inflation stability in forex forex rate and it has impact on the uh, stability in an economy so of certain uh, key economic variables and because of all these reasons and or many, many other factors that we are going to discuss in the coming session we are going to see that uh, money supply is a very important variable and already we said that the central bank of a country is the monetary authority and who actually has more say on uh, more control over determining the money supply so with this backdrop let us see how is the money supply determined and who controls the money supply and what causes it to change this is what we are going to discuss in the next couple of minutes and in the subsequent sessions so in the money supply process uh, there are mainly four players the first one is uh, the central bank and as we already seen that a central bank is a monetary authority that oversees the banking system and responsible for the conduct of monetary policy and the second key player uh, is the banking system itself that the banks and especially commercial banks savings and loan associations mutual savings banks and credit unions that is another another key, uh, key player and th then comes depositors the depositors means individual uh, institu and institutions uh, that hold uh, deposits in banks and in addition to that uh, the borrowers from the banks they also become part a key player uh, in the money supply process that means borrowers means individuals and institutions that borrow from the depository institutions and institution that issue bonds that are purchased by uh, depository institutions uh, these are the uh, four key players 
and what we are going to do now uh, we now focus on the central bank who is the key player in this process then how central bank uh, through the central bank activity that is through influencing through the balance sheet uh, its liability and uh, asset side we are going to see that how uh, central banks conduct or monetary policy how they it affects money supply and the central bank when they conduct monetary policy it involves actions uh, that affects its balance sheet that means holding of assets and liabilities so we are now going to discuss how the change uh, that the conducting of monetary policy by the central bank by a central bank how does it influence how does it affect the balance sheet that the asset side and the liability side and using a t account we are going to discuss that so coming to fed's balance sheet fed means here i mean the central bank the fed which i mentioned here is the federal reserve system that the us central banking system so uh, that means the fed and indian context obviously we can use reserve bank of india for, just for the sake of simplicity and uh, international standardization of our uh, learning materials uh, let us call it as a uh, fed fed means the central bank so uh, in the using that fed's balance sheet um, let us now discuss the assets and liabilities so coming to the asset side of the central bank of the fed uh, one of the asset is the government securities held by the central bank so fed provides reserves to the banking system by purchasing securities that means purchasing a uh, buying and selling of government securities from the banking system uh, is also is called as open market operation so this is the process so that means in this process the asset that the central bank is having is the government securities so an increase in government securities held by fed leads to an increase in money supply that we are going to see uh, in the subsequent sessions uh, sessions clearly so before going to that let me uh, make it clear this part that means one of the asset is uh, asset by held by the fed is the government securities that the uh, that is purchased from the commercial banks obviously you know that securities uh, with the banking system actually they bought it from the treasury that means from the federal government right so that means uh, who whatever is uh, that, that the security is purchased by the banking system uh, when it is purchased by the fed then it becomes uh, the asset of the federal reserve system so this open this is also called as open market operation which i just mentioned uh, you know that this one uh, become when central bank the fed sell securities sell government securities to the uh, banking system so at that time it credits in the commercial banks the banking systems account uh, in the form of reserve uh, it in the form of reserve it credits suppose if uh, a, the fed buy suppose fed buy for example uh, 10 million uh, 10 million of government securities of securities from government securities from the banking system then as a proceeds uh, of this transaction when they sell this 10 million securities to the uh, banking system so the proceeds of currency that the 10 million uh, 10 million and uh, this one will be credited to the account of the banking system and it will be credited and it will be immediately reflected as the reserve increase in the reserve of the banking system so this is also a okay, OVO we are also going to call it as a non borrowed uh, reserve because the increase in this reserve of the banking system happening through the open market operation is not through borrowing from the central bank but because of selling of uh, securities to the uh, central, central bank right so as a result uh, you can see that uh, they will be getting uh, 10 million uh, with the central bank and it will be uh, immediately uh, credited to the banking system as reserve so here which i i think i mentioned it is a selling why actually it is purchasing of securities when they purchase uh, then the net proceeds uh, will be credited to the banking system as reserve the by purchasing of security by uh, the fed and the second component is discount loans a discount loans means fed can provide reserve to the banking system by making discount loans to banks right so here an increase in discount loans can also be a source of increase in the money supply 
so the discount rate uh, discount loan means discount loans are given at a discount rate and in india we call it a uh, bank rate so here uh, what happened that when the central bank fed uh, give loans to the banking system at a discount rate that means the reserve of the banking system uh, increases here we are going to see that the reserve of the banking system increases and but the reserve of the banking system increases and we are going to call it as borrowed reserve because borrowed reserve means banking system borrowed it from the uh, central bank right so we can see that there are two main assets for a central bank one is government securities that is holding second one is the discount loans made to the uh, banking system so we are going to say that the we are already we just now we disc already discussed that uh, government securities this one when they are purchasing it from a uh, commercial bank it is done through the open market uh, operation uh, this is also called as non borrowed reserve and the second one the discount loans we can see that this is the loans made by the central bank to the banking system so it is given a, at a discount rate and for from for the banking system uh, this increase in this reserve uh, is due to the uh, borrowing from the uh, central bank so we are going to call it as borrowed reserve so these are the two major assets uh, of the uh, central bank and in the next session uh, we are going to discuss the liability side of the balance sheet thank you